All right. What's up, guys? Sorry for the delay. We've been running into some technical issues, this interview software, but hopefully you guys can see us now. So we are coming at you live. It's going to be me and Anthony today. And uh, we're going to be covering, I think it's like module module three or four, uh, where we talk about the pre-launch phase. So at this point, we'll be talking about and answering questions about the things that you want to do and make sure you get done before your product actually arrives at the warehouse. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but much of the work that comes with launching actually is, being, is done before the product arrives at the warehouse. And you can really cut down the time of how long it takes you to launch by doing all your work up front. And this is a lot of what I've done. You know, we've launched again over 200, 250 products. I can't even count anymore. Um, but yeah, we, we've launched a lot of products and really nailed down the process of how to um, get all these things together. So yeah, we're going to be briefly walking through a couple of these things. As you know, we also have the A to Z checklist. All right, cool, cool, Meg. Thanks for the introduction. So I just shared it to the Facebook group. So shortly we're going to have a whole bunch of people pop up on cool. here. But awesome. like you were saying, you know, with the pre-launch, it's super important that why is my camera always blurry whenever I use it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have like good internet here. I don't know. But uh, basically during the pre-launch, you said it's really important to get things like up and running. And like, what do you mean by that? Right? Because like, you know, when items are being shipped for like those 90 days, like what are things that people should be doing? What's up, Benjamin? But uh, what's uh, what are things that people should be doing in the meantime while they are waiting for their inventory to arrive at Amazon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a ton of stuff. I think a, a big part of it is just making sure that your listing is really good to go. And that means making sure that you're doing your keyword research. So doing a lot of in-depth keyword research. Um, and applying that to your copywriting. So making sure you're mm -hmm. optimizing every single facet of your listing, optimizing your title, optimizing your uh, your copy, uh, your bullets, your product description, your enhanced brand content, and your backend keywords. Also making sure that, that your photography is up to speed and that you have all the graphics and design work done around that. You know, I, I know from personal experience when I shop on Amazon that it's rare. I mean, it's very rare that I actually read all the details, right? I, that I even read the bullets, really. I'm looking at pictures and I'm looking at reviews. So it's often that I say that if the pictures can't sell the product itself and doesn't have all the information that you need to make a purchase decision, then your, your listing isn't optimized well enough for those conversions. Um, so that's kind of the perspective that I look at it. So we want to make sure that before the product arrives, everything is optimized and it's ready to go because you know, we talk about that 14 day window, right? And right now Amazon prioritizes or gives you 14 days to really maximize from when you launch. So it's more important now than ever to make sure that your listing is fully, fully optimized to the best of your ability prior to launching. Um, you know, okay. we used to, no. yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And real quick, I just want to ask, there's a couple of people that are tuning in right now. I just want to ask like, where are you guys tuning in from? Like comment below where you guys are tuning in from. Just curious on like, who's in the audience right now, who's watching. I know our boy Benjamin Tan is from Singapore. I don't know what time it is over there. Benjamin, what time is it over there in Singapore? It's curious. But yeah, where are you guys tuning in from? Let us know in the comments below. But yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Nick. You were just saying right before that, uh, what was it about the listing thing? <laughs> yeah, we're on a free trial. Yeah. <laughs> Still trying to decide yeah. want to buy. Sorry, you are saying? Yeah. No, you were just saying something and I interrupted you. I forgot what it was because uh, I just wanted just to see where everyone's from. Yeah. 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 No, I was just saying that, yeah. you know, um, it's important to maximize that 14 day window. So we used to launch products and maybe have our listing optimized like 50%. And then we'd spend the next two or three weeks as the listing is live to basically, you know, re optimize it and make it better. And you should be doing that. But I would say you should try to get your listing to 90% before activating the listing before the product arrives at the warehouse. That way, once it's arrived, you know, everything is set in motion. And that includes PPC as well. Got it, got it. So we got people tuning in from Michigan, SC, I assume that's South Carolina, my boy Brandon, I met on the FBA Rockstars cruise, Luciana from Toronto, um, Benjamin says 920 in the morning. So he's like 12 hours difference from us. Whoa. But okay, so in terms of, in terms of the keyword research that they're doing, right? So, the, uh, okay, Nick, I know there's tons of tools out there, like, uh, there are certain tools I use in my business. Is there like yep. one tool or two tools that you really like using within your Amazon business to do keyword research, right? And I guess why would you use yeah. that tool? Yeah. So, I mean, back in the day, you know, you could only use merchant words or you could only use like uh, Google keywords, right? Because there weren't many options for doing keywords. And a lot of these were based on guesses. Personally, now, I mean, there have been a, a slew of tools that come out with actual real data from Amazon. 
And so I think this is like one of the primary things that you should be doing. You should be using tools that actually pull real search volume from Amazon. And so a couple of those that come to mind are going to be like Helium 10, Seller.Tools, uh, which I personally use. And we also have uh, a group discount code, 20% off if you guys want to do that. It's in the crafting guide. But I personally like to do that because then you'll know early on um, whether or not those are keywords that you want to target. So so let's break down seller tools. Um, what I do okay. is I'm going to go ahead and let's say uh, right now seller tools is based on you can only add the, the SKU to seller tools if you have it in your inventory. But what you can do is you can just add your inventory immediately um, and then you can just plug it into seller tools and then start pulling in keywords by entering comp competitor ASINs and then filtering based off of exact search volume. And then you can just filter it from, from highest to lowest. And then I'll prioritize and choose like my top 10 primary keywords I want to target in my copy. And then I'll also have secondary keywords that I'll be targeting as well. But those are the keywords I'm going to be using to guide my copy and also to guide my PPC uh, and everything else. Got it. And then before you move forward, you're saying you choose. So I know within Solar Tools, there's like the, there's exact and broad. The reason I assume you're choosing exact is because it's more easier to uh, – use those in targeting for PPC and within your ad copy. Um, and that's why you sort by exact and that's your preference of doing everything in terms of the data and broad and like the relevancy score. Right. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, one really important thing to recognize, and I think you brought up a good point is relevancy, right? So, you know, relevancy is super, super important. And if you go and sell a tools, there's something called relevancy and there's a percentage. So let's say, for example, I'm selling garlic presses. And uh, I know the keyword is garlic press. The product is garlic press. Amazon is literally going to give that listing a score from 1% to 100% to basically say how relevant Amazon thinks you are to that keyword. Now, if you're 100% relevant for that keyword, then that's great. That means your PPC is going to be cheaper. That means it's going to be easier for you to rank for those keywords. Uh, mm -hmm. However, if let's say your, your product is a garlic press and your relevancy mm -hmm. is only 40% or 50%, that means Amazon doesn't really think you're relevant for that keyword. And it's going to be a lot harder for you to rank and index for those keywords. So what you can do to change those levers around is to basically add those keywords throughout your copy a little more, make sure that you're indexed for it, doing, you know, doing a bunch of checks just to make sure that those primary keywords are repeated throughout your listing and that it's clear to Amazon when they scan your listing that you are relevant for those keywords. So that's going to be really important, and you can pull that data directly from seller tools. Got it, got it. And that makes a lot of sense. So I think, I don't know, me personally, maybe a year ago, I didn't even know relevancy was a thing. Like those of you guys watching right now, did you guys know like what relevancy was? Are you guys taking into account that of like what the tools you're using? Because I know there's certain tools, I believe, last time I used Merchant Words, they didn't have a relevancy like score. I think, I know they have like the broad and they have the exact, but... Did you guys know that, right? And then also, like, you guys watching us on the live right now, what tools are you guys using for keyword research? I'm just curious because there's so many out there, right? Um, and I personally like using, like, as many keywords tools as I can just to – because I feel like they're all just a little different and they show different keywords, right? So, like, in my stack, personally, I have uh, Zon Words right now, which is completely free uh, from what I understand for the time being. So use it, take advantage of right, uh, that right now and optimize it. Viral Launch just released a, a new one um, that they've been using. And then Solar Tools is also like another one that I started using because of you and Fernando. Um, and I really love it. Um, but just comparing all of them. And I still actually use Keyword Inspector, even though it's run yeah. by James Herbal, um, piece of <laughs> shit, that, <laughs> that uh, is stealing people's like drop shipping information. But uh, it still works good and still produces solid results for me. So that's what I have in my stat. Uh, it looks like Delia, I don't know if I say, uh, I'm saying that right, but he's saying I use Helium 10, but it's expensive. Yeah, I think Helium 10 is a bit expensive, but they yeah. do have a lot of powerful things within their suite. Marianne also says she also does use Helium 10. And then Will from Dallas, or boy Will from Dallas, uses Seller Tools, which I assume that's what ST is. Yep. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, I, okay. I want to piggyback on Keyword Inspector, because I think Keyword Inspector does something that's unique compared to a lot of other tools which is that they actually pull where an ASIN is ranked across all keywords. So let's say, again, let's use a garlic press example. You know, if it's garlic press, kitchen tools, all that stuff, I can see where my competitor is ranked, you know, mm -hmm. based off of all those keywords. So, so that's really helpful for finding longer tail keywords where they might be ranked number one. 
And so, you know, in, in terms of a strategy, it's easy to rank for longer term, longer tail keywords, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah. so, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can find all those longer tail relevant keywords and then target those as uh, well. Um, and once you start yeah. ranking for those longer tail keywords, it'll be easier to rank for your, your primary keywords too. Yeah. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, so John in the audience, um, John, the founder of, uh, my solar pal, um, but he, he wanted to let us know about a free keyword tool called Google keyword player. I definitely use that within my stack, um, and that's very, very powerful. Yeah. Michael D coming again and trolling us again says, "What's up, <laughs> Fernando and Anthony?" Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, obviously this is Nick and this is me, Anthony. So <laughs> Michael, try and press our buttons. I see what you're trying to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so so he intends in stack solar tools onwards, but yeah. At the very end of the day, though, right? What's most important, right, is like uh, I know this is pre-launch, but we're talking. So initially, when you get your keywords in there, but ideally, once your listing is launched, you always have to be continually like optimizing your listing, right? Like, keep optimizing it. Understand what keywords like still need to remain or, or need to be added to your listing, right? Um, and then you keep, keep testing, and you'll see different results. You start ranking for different keywords. The more um, you like move it within like the title to like bullets to description from back end keywords. From what I've seen in my experience, like if I want to rank for like a certain keyword and I only have it like say in my back end search terms, like say it's the word like tennis ball, right? But I don't have the word tennis ball within my title. If by moving into my title, generally like I don't know, like Amazon from what I've seen like puts more weight towards it. Is that something like you've seen too, Nick, by moving certain keywords from the backend search term spot or subject matter spot to, you know, from like that yeah, to like different spots within real estate. You know, I, I think things are constantly changing at Amazon. Um, you know, it used to be the case that the title was the most important. I, I still think that is the case anecdotally, but you know, a, a lot of people that we talk to, right, Leo and everyone else says that, you know, as long as those keywords are in your listing, then you should be good to go. But I, I like to just really emphasize the importance of the title. One thing that, that makes me feel like the title is more important, and I found this anecdotally through my own experience, is that you know, I like to put my, my main keywords, the most relevant, at the beginning. Because remember, like, I, I think it's like 50% of purchases are on mobile, right? So you know, when that's the case, if you're looking, if just think about when you're shopping on your app, you, know, you only see the first couple characters, right? So that's why it's super important to put those primary keywords in the beginning. Because that's what people are going to see. And that's why I like to put also like the quantity amount. Like if it's a four pack, I'll put it at the beginning. A two pack, because that might be my main selling point. My competitor is selling a one pack and I'm selling a four pack, let's say. And if that's the case, I'm going to put the four pack in the beginning of the title mm -hmm. so that when it shows like related products, it'll show that, mm -hmm. hey, I'm looking at a one pack, but there's a four pack for a better value and I want to purchase that one. So I don't Got think it necessarily it. in terms of SEO purposes, it might make a massive difference where it's placed in the title. I think it more has to do with like the buying behavior. When someone is looking at the listing on their mobile phone, they're more likely to see those keywords. True, true. And that's another th good thing that uh, Nick brought up too. Like you definitely want to check your listing on mobile. I think a lot of us always work on our computer, but on mobile, right? Like Nick is saying, like certain um, text gets cut off faster than it does like on your desktop. Right, so you kind of want to identify, like, if you're selling like a product that has a two pack, four pack, like Nick was saying, right? You want your customer to know that, especially if they're on mobile, because if they're just scrolling and you have the exact same pictures, right, and it doesn't look like a two pack uh, visually, then they're not going to see it unless it's in your title. So make sure you put that within like the fold before it breaks off. And everything. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and, and here's another tip. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't do this, but the subject matter field is another place where you can index additional keywords. So, mm -hmm. so the back end search terms, it's only what, 250 characters that you will index, even though they allow you 5,000 characters, but only 250 will index. In the subject matter field, you can index 50 characters per line. So that's an additional 250 key, uh, characters, or sorry, 250 uh, uh, yeah, characters or words that you can add into uh, your listing that a lot of people don't take advantage of. And from my understanding and my experience, uh, brand names aren't really filtered through the subject matter field, at least for now as of today. So you can still put in some kind of brand names in the subject matter field so that you can rank for those brands. Um, that's, that's a little uh, black hat trick. Um, you know, I don't know how long that'll last, but that's something that, that we've seen to be uh, true. Yeah, and I've seen that true too. And I really want to emphasize on that point too, like the lucky people that are watching this live. 
uh, or anyone watching the replay of this, right? Use a subject matter field, right? And use it to your advantage while you still can, right? So if you're, you know, you have like a kitchen product, right? And you're selling like something very similar to like say kitchen aid, right? Then you can put kitchen aid within the subject matter field and you can still rank for the word kitchen aid, right? It's possible to do that if you have it within the subject matter field. However, in certain areas, uh, if you were to put kitchen aid or certain brands within or like back end search terms within your title, you will get like the band hammer, you will get like the IP thing coming down or like Amazon may like pause your account or something. Uh, so just definitely as a heads up, uh, it is a little more on the gray hat, black hat side, but mm -hmm. the subject matter field is one of the areas that you can definitely take advantage of right now that most people, most people do not definitely know about. Yeah. Uh, if you guys did know about that, or if you guys didn't know about that, like, let me know in the comments. I'm just curious if you guys did or did not know about that. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I see a couple questions. Badra is asking mm -hmm. about the uh, subject matter field. Is it in the back end? Yeah, it's in the back end. It's either above or below uh, the sub the search terms. So yeah. it's going to be in the same like uh, same field um, yeah. or same like section. Yeah. And just clarify that more, Badra. Um, essentially when we're, you know, we're in your product and you hit like edit, um, item and you go, you know, to the back where it shows like back in search terms and like all those extra fields, subject matter field is also in that area. So that's where it is. Um, Brandon, my boy, Brandon from the Rockstars Cruise asks, is any insight on the newer EBC picture text? Yeah. Um, um, okay. so, so EBC, I, I think this plays into the whole photography piece, which we haven't really covered yet. Um, mm -hmm. EBC is awesome. We use it for all our listings and we've found anywhere from like a three to 5% increase in conversions by taking true advantage of the EBC. So, um, just think about it this way. Like people buy, buy through images, right? It's, it's rare that you're actually reading the bullets. It's more for SEO purposes. People want to buy through images. So EBC or enhanced brand content for people who don't know what it is. When you get brand registered, you have access to ba basically be able to, you know, create a better description field that includes images and you can, you know, create a beautiful page under, you know, in your description section. And, um, you know, we found it to be awesome. It's awesome to convey additional things that you want to convey about your brand. You can talk about your brand story um, and you can also add more images and lifestyle images. So you'll notice that like all the top guys um, are always using this. So I, that's why I always really push, you know, making sure that if you were just looking at your images alone, is it enough information for someone to actually buy the product? So literally just like stop looking at the text. The text is, people aren't gonna read that. They're gonna look at price and the images. So make sure all the features are conveyed in your images. You know, put, you know, graphics or infographics stating like, oh, this is how many pieces are in there. Oh, this part is waterproof, blah, blah, blah. You know, with arrows pointing to it, make it look really well designed. And even have, you can have a, a one image that actually talks about, you know, um, the reviews, like positive reviews and quotes from people, you know, in your reviews, which actually gives social validation and proof to your product. And you can fill up an additional photography space. Um, so those are just some ideas of ways that you can um, stand apart from your competition. You can even do a, a comparison showing like generic product. This is like what they offer. This is what you offer. You know, we've taken advantage of that and, and we've definitely seen a lift in conversions just based off of those alone. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think that EBC is awesome. We utilize it. And if you have it, definitely take advantage of it. Brandon, did that answer the question? Because if I had that question, I think that definitely answered it. <laughs> uh, but just real quick, I want to let you guys know that this Friday, we're also having another private label NBA workshop. So if you guys missed the last one that we had, or our very, our very first one that we had this yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday, yeah. first one. Yeah, awesome. our first one uh, we just had yesterday. Then make sure you guys register for the one that we're having this Friday. I put it in the comments below. But yeah, make sure you guys register for the comment, or uh, not for the comment, for the workshop. Um, another question we got is from Tom here. Tom here asks, is, is the subject matter field limited to certain product categories? Um, do you have any insight on that, Nick? Um, I mean, so we sell in a couple different categories, and I haven't seen it being limited for any category, but there are also a ton of categories that we don't sell into, you know? So um, I'm not going to speak for all categories. Um, you know, I know that apparel is really different from, let's say, like, you know, home and kitchen or patio and outdoor. So um, I would say that for most categories, the subject matter field is available, uh, but I haven't sold in every single category. So I, I, can't, I can't speak to that.
Okay, yeah, and I'm in the same boat, Tom. So Tom like have been able to use it in all the categories that I'm currently selling in. So like home kitchen, boys, home improvement, yeah, and then B I S S. Um, so all of those have actually worked for me. Can you explain the subject matter for me? Um, okay, you explain that. Oh, and then Badra asks a good uh, question. Um, do you have to have the item trademarked before brand registry can be done? So this kind of ties into EBC. But yes, in order to do EBC, right, you also need brand registry. And in order to get brand registry, you need your trademark. So just kind of like reverse that. In order to like do all that, you need to get your item trademarked first before you can get it brand registered. And once you get a brand registered, then you have access to EBC and all of that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and here's a tip, like getting, I mean, we have a couple of trademarks that are in the works and you can't get, you know, brand registry until you actually have a registration number that's approved by the USBTO. Right. And that's going to take from the moment of your application. I mean, we applied, I think early this year and then it's, it's already been six months and we haven't gotten the registration number. So we're not, we can't get brand registry without having that registration number. And it takes, depending on how long, you know, the U S office takes eight, you know, it could take up to eight to 12 months. Um, depending on how busy they are. So here's a tip. You can actually um, file for a trademark in Mexico. And I, I've heard, um, and we have people in our million dollar sell group who've done this, where it, it goes through a lot faster. It's like half the time. And once you have that registration number, it actually applies to, to the US as well. So you can apply that in US, Canada, everywhere else. Yeah, and that's like a quick tip. So I know that Leo has a service that's part of like the Zon page, the suite and everything. I can't recall what the website is right now. Um, I'll look it up and I'll post it in the comments below. But basically, if you apply in like Mexico, and I think I just heard maybe it was like Germany or some other country in Europe, you could actually get your trademark within three months or so, like really, really fast, right? However, it won't protect you in the U.S. or anything, but it will allow you access to brand registry and basically protect you on Amazon in a way, and then you have access to EBC. So it just really depends on how long you want to wait, uh, risk reward and whatnot, but it can be worth it. And it is an option to kind of look into if uh, your product is taking off and you're really serious about it to just get that competitive head start before the competitors have access to EBC or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so Benjamin said that uh, UK is three months for a trademark. Yeah. I've heard something similar too. Yeah. And that's also approved, I think on Amazon as well. Um, I, I personally haven't done anything uh, with UK trademarks. Um, here's a tip related to UK, actually. It's kind of unrelated. But, you know, Amazon, especially if you're brand registered, you're going to need GS1 barcodes. And those are barcodes where you have to pay GS1 every single year um, for those barcodes to license those barcodes. And, you know, don't buy, because we just had to deal with this massive hassle where we bought uh, barcodes from a reseller, nationwide barcodes. And those are not accepted because it's not tied to your brand name. So we had to go through this entire old ordeal to get permission from the original purchaser. Um, so what you can do, um, GS1 barcodes are super expensive in the US. If you buy GS1 barcodes in the UK, for some reason, it's cheaper um, and they're legitimate and you can tie them directly to your brand. So that's a tip that you guys should definitely take advantage of if you want right. to be for those of you, For those of you who did catch that, Nick, could you repeat that one more time? Because I didn't totally catch that either. Okay, okay. So... <laughs> So obviously you need a UPC code, right? So you need UPC codes for your products. Now, Amazon, if you want to be brand registered, they're, all, they're now going to make sure that you have something called a GS1 barcode. And a GS1 is the organization that licenses you know, these barcodes across the world. And, um, you know, there are a ton of resellers that sell barcodes, but they're not officially licensed from GS1 or they're simply just resold, right? And so what happens is when you buy these barcodes, it's tied to an original company and if it doesn't match your company exactly amazon is going to disqualify it and say that hey your upc doesn't match the original holder of these upc codes and it doesn't match your brand name so we're not going to let you you know brand register this specific item and it's going to be really difficult for you to make any changes to your listing if you're brand registered so it's a huge pain in the ass so i highly recommend that you make sure that you buy G legit gs1 barcodes which is expensive but if you buy those barcodes from the UK website, it's a lot cheaper. So um, there's a tip. A pro tip, basically buy GS1 barcodes in the UK. Hey, Bajra. On the um, UK website? Yeah, Bajra, I'll post that in, the, uh, in our private label MBA uh, Facebook group. Yeah, I'll make sure that you can get access and you know where to purchase the GS1 barcode. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, so I don't think we included a video on that, but that is definitely a great, great tip. Yep. The private label course. I guess really quick moving on to the next question, right? Um, I think it's from Min. He asks, for supplements, how would you determine the keywords to target for a custom blend supplement? I, I think, in my opinion, it's kind of like similar to like any other way you would do keyword research, right? But uh, because it is a custom blend, then you might have access to more keywords because it is, you know, like more different things are inside of it. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Nick? So, you know, from my experience with supplements, I feel like there's usually like a primary ingredient, right? Like a primary thing that people are looking for. Um, so let's say, I don't know, like um, uh, a fiber supplement, right? Maybe you could add a fiber supplement and add some extra stuff to the fiber supplement. But the primary thing is still going to be the fiber ingredient. So it's likely that someone's going to look up fiber supplement uh, for this person, for women, for men or whatever. And so I think you'd have to still make that primary uh, ingredient part of your keyword. Um, and then all the additional stuff is just an additional thing that sells the product once they pull up the search results that separates you from your competition. Um, because again, I mean, it's hard to create demand for a brand new product on Amazon, right? You're, you're doing it based off of SEO and keywords. So you're going to have to try to make sure that you're, you're, you're um, leveraging the high search volume for the primary ingredient that you're targeting and, um, and hope that your, your special blend is enough to drive someone to purchase your product over another person. Um, you know, that's, that's been my experience. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and then I, we, I know we got a couple other questions here, but like before we jump into the other questions, I think uh, a really good point we should probably talk about a little bit in terms of the whole pre-launching section is pictures, right? Photography. Um, so having your pictures optimized before or they get to Amazon, right? Do you, Nick, do you have any tips off the bat of how someone can just be ready with like awesome pictures prior yeah. to, you know, while they're waiting. Yeah. I mean, look, I think a standard practice should be that while you're waiting for your products to arrive, that you should be just like analyzing all your competition hardcore. Look at your top five competitors and just look at their images, dissect every single image and also look at it from the perspective of search results, right? Like when you type in your top five or top 10 keywords, you know, and you look at all the results and you look at the main images, you know, what is something that can stand apart from the rest? So one example is, let's say, like food containers, for example. You know, you could easily sell a food container, and it's literally just a blank food container. Or you could make it look good by adding, like, fruit inside or, make, or having it look fully meal prepped. You know, you want to make sure that people can imagine themselves using it. And you also want to use color to make your listing pop out from the other results. I, I think every little bit counts. And usually red is a good color to include in your listing, especially if it, if it um, you know, if it, matches or, or blends well with the colors of your product but red is a, 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 a color that stands out so try to include that somehow with props and, and mm -hmm. your image i think that's really really key because you know your main image is something if you have a good main image it's going to make your ppc easier it's going to make your related click click through easier it's going to make you know your traffic go up because more people are going to click on it and it really solves the traffic problem in a lot of ways and so i found by just modifying a main image that I could easily just increase my traffic by a significant amount, anywhere from like 10 to 15%. It's crazy by just choosing the right one. Um, so that's, that's something that I, I really encourage people to do is to really just spend a lot of time analyzing exactly how you want to, um, exactly how you want to make your images look. So when you direct it to your photographer, a lot of people give free reign to the photographer to do whatever they want. You know, photographers, they don't know, right? They don't know what your competitors are doing. They don't know what it looks like. So, you know, mm -hmm. in the course, we really highlight this, you know, we, we show people how to create a creative guide, you know, creative direction for the photographer to basically show them exactly, you know, what kind of style you're going for. And it will include like our competitors images in there say, we want it to look like this, but these are the modifications we want to adjust, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's where, you know, we try to get as many variations done as possible um, based off of like what our, what our competitors are doing. Now, in addition to that, you know, we're going to take as many images as possible in, in as many different angles as possible against the white background. And then we're going to use our designer. Right now we have an in-house designer, but you could find someone on Fiverr um, and you can get them to basically plug, you know, this uh, product against a bunch of different lifestyle images. So you can get stock photos and put them, you know, in a, on a kitchen table or on a picnic blanket, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's a really cheap way 
to make your photography stand out. So you can get those lifestyle images without paying an arm and a leg. Because really where the extra cost in getting your photography done is in the lifestyle images where, you know, you have to get a model, you have to get, you know, a dog or baby, you know, that's really expensive. So if you are able to get, you know, your product done in as, or photography done in as many angles as possible, then it's going to be easy for any designer to just plug that image into, you know, a lifestyle image. Um, so, so that's what I highly encourage that you do. I think, you know, you have what, eight images, eight to nine images on Amazon, depending on, you know, what kind of seller you are. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I highly encourage that, you know, you take advantage of all that space, but really try to, you know, hit, hit all the points, try to have social validation, right? Include some quotes from really good reviews with an image of your product, have mm -hmm. a feature, yeah. you know, a hero image where you're including all the features of your product and it highlights it as close-ups within the image. You guys have seen that, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you could have another image that highlights your brand, you know, if it comes with a warranty, all that kind of stuff that, that highlights why they should buy from you over someone else. There's a ton of different ideas and we go into detail in the course as to all the different variations that you can create around images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and real quick, uh, there's a couple of you guys within the chat that are our students are asking about who we use and whatnot. We have that all listed within uh, the FAQ section and the resources section of our thing. Uh, but for everyone else that's like outside in the public group, we have uh, access to the guys that we use, uh, some of the guys we've used in the past in terms of graphic design, photography, and it's all listed within the graphic guide. So make sure you guys check that out if you guys have any questions on uh, or any wants or recommendations to compare on like who we use and whatnot. So yeah, but Nick, that was all like really, really good like photography tips. I really liked how you like talk about like infographic stuff and really, really highlighted uh, drove that home. I think a lot of people talk about it, but they didn't. They don't always know like exact examples, right, of how to implement, right? Like you were saying, like use the color red, use like contrasting colors that really make your image like pop out, right? Because mm -hmm. I see that in my own listings where that if I just focus on split testing my main main image over and over, like I can raise my click through rates, right? And like yep. if you can raise your click through rates, then that means your uh, all things are being equal, then you're most likely going to get more sales, right? If you can increase your impressions too, same thing, right? If you include, increase your click-through rates, then your ACOS is going to go down, like you were saying. So, yeah, guys, really, really drive um, focus and spend time on getting good photography done for your product. Um, if you can't get good photography done then or can't afford it for some reason, then there's also the option of, like, graphic renderings, uh, which yeah. I has worked in my uh, for my business too. And sometimes I've actually had situations where the graphic rendering worked better than the photography. But I do think that was because possibly maybe the photography wasn't done in the best way, right? But that's the nice thing about uh, graphic design, right? You can kind of like just like move the image around and you edit it on the fly. But, but with photography, you need a lot of different angles. And depending on who you have and who you work with, it can be costly. But, you know, a good tip that um, I learned from like Nick and Fernando and a couple other people is like, you know, check Craigslist, check for student college photographers, mm -hmm. right? And those might be some of your best photographers, uh, lifestyle photographers that you ever work with. Because um, to be honest, I think they're undervalued um, mm -hmm. and they don't know the type of talent they had or they're just looking to add stuff to their portfolio, right? Um, so, yeah, just check those out. And those are some areas that you can get started with. Um, yeah. Yeah, to add to that, by the way, um, you know, I think I like working with talk photographers. So we have a photographer that's literally a couple, like, like one block down from us. And I love using him and going there because I know exactly what I'm going for. I can take as many shots as I want on a per hour basis, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you send it to someone, let's say someone who specializes in the Amazon images, yeah, gonna they're going to charge. Charger. Sorry? I'm going to get my charger. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I'll just speak to you guys then. So, you know, if you get someone who specializes in doing Amazon photography, be there are people that on Fiverr, right? They charge per row. And it's like an arm and a leg. It could be anywhere from $500 to $800, right? For just one listing. I can literally get four products done and as many images as I want done with the span within the span of one to two hours. So that means I've spent essentially $300 to basically, you know, anywhere from $200 to $300 to get as many photos as I want done. And then we also have a great guy that we use uh, to do a, a dollar a photo retouching, which is super cheap. So all in, for all, you know, for listings or for products, you know, we're able to get all the photography done, all the graphic design done for less than $400.
which is pretty insane because a lot of people pay $400 for just photography alone. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. You want to find someone who works on a per hour basis um, rather than just like on a per image basis because that's really where you get, um, you know, you really get like uh, drastically impacted on your margins. All right. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Oh. Uh, yeah, I can, can, you, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, perfect. Um, all right, there's been a couple questions. <laughs> there's been a lot of questions actually yeah. since we've been talking. Um, okay, let's just just go through some. Mary Ann asks, "Do you use lifestyle pictures?" Um, so for me, I personally, at the beginning, I I wanted to get like lifestyle photography done, but it always cost a lot and it was very expensive. So yeah. what I resorted to was actually getting photography of my product, right? Or graphic designs of my product and then getting like stock images and placing my product in that, yeah. right? And I found that to be the most cost effective, fast way. And I don't know, it was just way less of a hassle just doing that. And I found it to be just as effective in, I haven't compared it, but I have seen my convergence go up by using lifestyle images, right? Yeah. Um, but, and then it's only using graphic designs plus uh, images like stacked onto it. So I've seen good results with that. Uh, Nick, have you found the same with you or? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we used to pay a guy like, I mean, I, I'm not even joking, like a thousand to $1,500 to do one oh. product. Right. And, mm -hmm. and he did amazing, beautiful lifestyle images. Yeah. Um, but again, like it was just so expensive, especially since we're launching so many SKUs a month, it just isn't cost effective. Yeah especially if some SKUs yep. might not work out. So, you know, the path of least resistance is exactly what you're talking about. We put stock images and we haven't found a difference in conversions, really. It's, it's pretty much been the same. I think there's a massive difference between not having lifestyle images and having lifestyle images. But in terms of whether or not they're authentic lifestyle images versus Photoshop lifestyle images, I haven't really seen a massive difference, personally. Yeah. And guys, like, if you work with the right people, like the guys we have, like, within our course and guys we recommend, it looks pretty real. Okay, like if you're looking on mobile and you're just scrolling through, it looks like it's pretty solid and you're not going to be like, oh, this is fake, right? Uh, for the most part, like they do a really good job at it, or at least the guys we work with. And I, it's, you know, you guys can find people like that up, uh, out there possibly. We have some people in the crafting guide that we work with. Um, I know there's some people on Fiverr that, are, that can be decent. I've heard of other people having good experiences with that. But yeah. Uh, ask around, look for recommendations, and check the graphic guide for um, areas like that, basically. Will asks, do you guys recommend any other vendors besides Fiverr and 99 Designs that are familiar with Amazon that would do infographic on photos? Um, so for me personally, I found like the guys on Fiverr for infographics to be pretty good, but you have to provide, like, but the thing is like working with anyone when it comes to photography or graphic design, you want to be very clear uh, about your expectations, right? I think that's where most people have bad experiences. So what I do personally is I record a loom video, right? So I record a video on my screen, like visually talking and pointing at certain parts of the product and be like, okay, this is what I want and this is what I want here. And it should say something about a lot of like this and then, or I'll provide them the exact copy, right? The more exact details you can give them, the more of a better job they'll do, right? Because they'll just make whatever you envision come to life. Uh, but I don't know. If you're like me, like I do have a little bit of trouble with my creative juices. So what I do is I go with my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, <laughs> this is what I want to do. But like, how can I spruce this up to make it look more pretty, right? So sometimes it just needs a woman's touch or a different, more creative person's um, touch to it. Yeah. Um, Nick. Any, anything you want to say about that? Um, I mean, so look, we've had in-house graphic designers for quite a while. So I think that like has really paid itself off because we have so many SKUs that, you know, just need regular maintenance. But yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, you, you got to be really clear. I think here's, here's a really good tip and just reminds me, I, I need to add this to the course too, is you want to create a, a brand style guide and this makes everything easier, right? So find a designer. If you want to pay a lot for someone, you know, uh -huh. upfront, this is going to make things a lot easier. You, you pay them, you know, let's say 500 bucks and say, look, this is my brand. This is what I want to convey, you know, make my logo and then tell me exactly the fonts that I want to use. And literally it's going to be like a Bible that shows any other designer how to make anything that adheres to your brand. That way you're never going to have to like, you know, replay it. You're never, when you have a new designer, you're not going to have to explain everything again. You literally just send them this document. It tells them exactly what fonts to use, how to use it, you know, what the logo looks like, all that kind of stuff. And then boom, they can take it away and make anything from that. 
So um, that's a huge tip, and I'm going to be including that in the course as well. But uh, but yeah, I, I think that's going to be major. So that's where you can do some upfront costs, invest a lot for that, and then you can find a cheaper designer, let's say in the Philippines or wherever, and you can have them use that to basically replicate that design. Because the, the I think in terms of design work, you know, a lot of people can can do design work based off of direction. But in terms of actual creative stuff, where they're creating something from scratch, you know, it's going to be hard to find someone who's really, really good at that and can hit home every single time. That's going to need a lot of guidance. So, you know, you want to do that upfront work first. Okay, yeah, I totally agree with that. So, yeah, that basically is like a brand identity package, exactly. like a branding package. But I mean, some of those uh, fees can go really high. So you got to shop around for like a good. I guess like service person to work with or just invest in a little bit of money depending on, you know, how much traction you have with the product or how much you believe in the product going forward. Right. Yeah. But yeah, having that base on is like really, really simple and it helps guide every single piece of design work you do in the future. Not only will it help with like your image and product packaging, right. It will help you with like your branding identity when it comes to like social media, if you ever go down that route, right. Say there's certain influencers you want to work with. They're like, Hey, this is the brand identity package. It's like, here's the fonts you can use, here's blah, 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 you can use, and it just makes it a lot easier for anyone, anyone that you work with in terms of graphic design. It just lays it down of like, this is what you got to do, um, this and that and that, and super, super simple. Totally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Next question. I don't know which we left off on. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, oh, I, I know where. Okay, so Namdang asks... How do you measure exactly the traffic from keywords typing in Amazon search box to any product listing on Amazon? So I don't know if I fully understand your question, but uh, how to measure traffic from keywords. So if you want to measure the traffic, I would say seller tools, right? That gives you exact search volume. You know, I, I think one, one thing to also note is that I also like to actually use Amazon search bar for keyword ideas. So there's this awesome, awesome tool. It's called Keyword Amazon Suggestion Expander, and it's a Chrome extension. And basically, it helps you find additional keywords that people are looking for through the search bar. But I like to use the search bar to validate my keyword ideas, right? So I might think, oh, garlic, pr small garlic press or uh, silver garlic press. And I'll literally like type in that, that into Amazon. And if I see that result pop up, then that means that there's some search volume. It validates the fact that people are actually searching for it. And it's just like Google, right? Like if you type in garlic, G-A-R, garlic press might be the first thing that shows up and then other additional ideas might pop up. And Amazon is going to list um, the highest, uh, the, the, the keywords with the most search volume higher towards that's closer to the search, the search bar. Does that make sense? I don't know if I verbalized that correctly. Um, but basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, but basically the search is, you know, like when you search for something different, things will get auto-suggested, right? And using that, you can kind of identify and understand, and we confirm if your ideas for keyword ideas are valid or not, right? Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Badra asks, are these weekly webinars or impromptu webinars? So right now, um, we're reaching the end of like our weekly webinars. This is kind of to celebrate our launch. This is also to, also to give you an idea of like if you guys sign up for the course, you know, you guys can join the registration too, just to get a sense of what it'll be about. But you'll we'll have these uh, basically twice a month Q and A's with just the students to really give in depth answers to questions they might have about their journey. So this is something we don't do often. We've been doing it a lot recently, um, just to guys to give you guys a taste of like what we're offering um, and also what comes with the course. But yeah, this is. It, the kind of Q&A that we have right now with Anthony is kind of, you know, what we'll be having regularly in, in our private Facebook group. Yeah. And I mean, we have, we have a lot of fun doing these too. And the good thing about like doing these for us, at least is it allows us to reflect back on like what we know so far. And it also allows us to reflect on like, oh, we want to add this to the course. We want to add this content to the course. So you guys help us inspire, you know, what content we put in the course. And it allows us to just really reflect back on our journey and understand what we're doing good, what we're doing bad. Because if there's any situation, right, where we can't answer your question, right, then maybe it's something that we need to either go learn or we need to find a resource that can help you guys out with your question, right? Totally. Um, so that's basically that. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, Nick, earlier, did you talk about how you found your photographer? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think you touched on it earlier. Yeah. Like, we found a yeah. photographer through referrals. You know, yeah. we actually found this awesome photographer from an art school nearby. And literally, I think Craigslist is a great place. If you find students, I think a student is awesome. They're always looking for money, especially if they're from, like, an art school. <laughs> uh, 
So, so yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, and they're really, really damn good, but they just need direction, you know, and I, I think you get better and better with direction, you know, the, you know, you get better in direction, the more you do it. So, you know, in the course, I talk about how to visualize everything, how to make sure that you make it as cost effective as possible, because I think that's really important. Um, but yeah, if you can ideally find one photographer that you work with, that you like working with on a regular basis, I think that's ideal. Um, that's what we found to work for us. Okay, cool. And then Will from Dallas again asks, not asked again, but Will from Dallas asks, do you have the $1 photo retoucher vendor contact in the course? And yes, yes, of course mm-hmm. we do. And he's, he's an awesome contact that just, so he just good. makes like images look like shiny. Right. It just yeah. pops. Right? It just like makes it more visually appealing. You know how like when they add like a little shine and there's like a, like the faint shadow that just makes it like perfectly like just crisp. That's what he does. And he just makes everything just like pop a little bit easier. Totally. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, like retouching is freaking expensive. I, I had the student that I talked about do our retouching at one point, And literally we paid like $500 to retouch like, like, I don't know, like, uh, like 150 photos. It was so crazy expensive. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and like this guy by comparison only cost me 150. So literally by using him, I saved hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And so, yeah, I mean, he's an amazing resource. He can do not only retouching, but yeah. also like, uh, edits, you know, so you can make your, uh, image appear on like a stock image, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. So like if they want to like move it into like a lifestyle image, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, cool. Um, Amir, uh, one of the, Amir brings up a really good point, and he asks, him, what's a good PPC budget for launching a product? So this part we haven't got to within the pre-launch section yet, but so, so far, uh, if you guys missed it, we uh, talked about keywords earlier, and we talked about photography so far, and those are two, 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 like, super, super important uh, major points, right? Uh, where am I supposed to? But it's also important to have your PPC set up, right? So this is also one of the other things that you want set up it kind of correlates to, you know, your keyword research um, that you do too, right? So whatever keywords you have within your listing, you also do want it in your PPC campaign, right? Um, But in terms of uh, answering Amir's question, uh, Nick, do you have any suggestions on what you would consider a good PPC budget for launching a product? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we definitely go into detail in the course for this. Um, we have an entire strategy called the PPC Blitz strategy, which is all based around how to mm-hmm. launch with PPC effectively, yeah. right? So it's like an entire module, which is really exciting. Um, but I mean, to kind of give you just like um, a sense of like what we talk about, I would say a good budget is like forty to fifty dollars a day. Now that might sound like a lot, but just remember, you're paying Amazon for the data, right? You're trying to get the search term report data from Amazon, so you know exactly what keywords are validated and which ones you want to target. So I like to split it up across like five different campaigns, you know, in different match types with two different auto campaigns. And then I sep- I split that up across, you know, $50. And then I, I, I have that budget for around one to two weeks. And then what I'll do is I'll start to optimize, you know, my, my campaign. So it becomes cheaper and cheaper over time. And I'm optimizing towards the keywords that are really driving, you know, a lot of uh, volume and, and cheap traffic my way. And again, like, remember, we talked about the 14 day window, right? You know, think about the $50 budget a day as like your launch budget, you know, instead, you know, we never really do giveaways usually, and we are able to just do PPCs. And uh, if you do a $50 a day budget, it, think of it as like a more targeted giveaway process, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're doing it 50, my math is totally off, but 50 <laughs> times 14, that's $700, right? You're spending over two weeks. But Amazon is going to start ranking you higher and higher because you're showing them that you're willing to spend a lot more to get ranked for those, for those primary keywords. And if your listing is fully optimized, like we're teaching you right now, it'll be a lot easier for you to rank for, those, for, for that first page and take advantage of that 14 day Exactly. Exactly. So that was a great question to be able to like kind of segue us into like the whole PPC section. Well, uh, sorry, uh, Anthony, real yeah. quick. I, I just want to yeah. remind everyone that tomorrow... Sean Smith and I, we are going over PPC specifically. Ah, so exactly. uh, this is, you know, this is a question for tomorrow. We're going to have another, another live, but Sean Smith yeah. is actually, you know, I'm going to be interviewing him and we're going to do a yeah. Facebook live um, with him. And he's a PPC pro. He manages like multiple eight figure accounts. Um, and he also uh, co-created one of the modules with us um, and ho- also co-created the PPC blitz strategy. So be excited for that. If you have a lot of detailed PPC questions. Yeah, and Sean Smith is like the man. He manages over uh, for Nick and for now anywhere from like fifty to like seventy thousand dollars 
a month in PPC spend, right? A month in PPC spend. And that's like a lot more than most people's like salaries um, in a year, right? And he's managing that a month for Naked Fernando's account. Uh, Sean Smith only works with like seven and eight figure sellers. So if you guys are looking to hire him, you guys can. Maybe you guys can talk to him if you guys are at the seven and eight figure level. Um, but those are the kind of accounts he's managing. And that's who we have within our course, right? Teaching you guys how to set up your PPC campaigns, how to optimize it, how to, you know, do like the research for what PPC keywords to use in there, how to use negative keywords, right? How to use a broad campaign, how to use an auto campaign. I use exact campaigns. I use a phrase campaign, right? There's a lot of little things that you have to really understand when it comes to PC. And that's why eventually, right, businesses eventually get a dedicated PPC person once they start scaling because there's just a lot of work that has to be handled. But in the very beginning, right, you want to understand how to set these things up. And so you guys should definitely, 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 definitely tune in tomorrow for when Nick is interviewing Sean Smith. Uh, I know I am um, because there's a couple things I want to learn a little bit more and like share it with my team. I'm making my team watch it too, so they can pick up some tips. <laughs> so I don't have to tell them directly either. So yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, well, it says love the brand style guide pro tip that you were talking about earlier. Thanks, Nick. Uh, David also really thought that was a great tip too on the style guide. Awesome. Uh, but he, yeah, he does bring, David also brings up the good points of like, say like using the headline font body font, logos, logo color ones, white space, descriptions, and exactly. rules for like age. And that's what the brand identity does, right? Um, and that's what the brand identity guide does. Cool. Mm-hmm. cool. Um, let's see. Michael asks, is, what is a good brand identity site? Do you happen to remember like who you possibly used in the past? or um, uh, A brand past? identity site. Sorry, I, I don't think I understand. Like a site to do brand identity? Um, just like someone that will help you create your brand identity package. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I would say you probably want to find like a U.S. designer, um, you know, and we'll, you know what, I have a good designer that I will actually uh, put in in the course. Um, and uh, yeah, she's really, really awesome and, and not that expensive too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you want to find someone who look at their portfolio of work. There's a ton of designers out there um, and just try to find one um, and look at their work and then just, uh, you know, uh, tell them exactly what you're looking for. And then I think a good way to practice this is to say, look, you know, once you get your first product in the door, say, look, I need you to do packaging. But in addition to that, I also want you to do our logo. And I also want you to do our brand style guide. And just expect that you're going to pay a lot right now. But later on down the line, you can just contract someone from the Philippines or let's say Pakistan, and it'll be a lot mm-hmm. cheaper. So it's an upfront cost. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. Uh... Andrew Black asks, is, how do you rank for multiple keywords? So we're going to jump into this in the launch section, um, and we'll be going over that maybe next week, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. This week is yeah, yeah, so we'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll go over like the launch section then. So Andrew, stay tuned for that, and we'll talk about it more. But uh, just to like preface it in relation to what we're talking about here today, the pre-launch section, Definitely, you have to have all your keywords within basically your listing um, on the back end or somewhere like that. So that's one thing you definitely need to do. Uh, Michael asks, what is your strategy for gaining initial reviews and do you wait until you have a minimum number before you start PPC? Anthony, I think this is a question for the launch, right? We're going to do a launch Facebook Live. Yeah, so for the launch phase, Michael, we're going to dive deep into this. So definitely ask me this again during the launch. But just to like touch upon it a little bit, part of the launch strategy that we have is we have a soft launch section where we identify different groups that we like reach out to in order to figure out how we get uh, how to get those initial reviews, right? How to provide that social proof. So when you do run your PPC, when you do launch, right, and you ha- you have the social proof of like at least like 10 reviews on your listing that are ideally five stars. So it's easier for people, for you to have a high click-through rate and a high conversion rate. Uh, but yeah, definitely ask me that um, on that part tomorrow. Cool. Uh, Badra already says, great info. Thanks, guys. I already joined the NBA Masterclass and I was loving it. All right, glad you're loving it. Um, oh, keep, keep, yeah, keep up the questions. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Will Henderson, do you guys do any off Amazon promotions like Facebook, Instagram ads, drive traffic for launch? So this is something we kind of talk about actually in the post launch. 
section uh, in terms of how to like drive more traffic, right? So this is like uh, I really like using Nick's example of how um, the, the formula for sales, right? So the formula for sales is traffic times conversion, right? Equals sales, and those are the two levers you really want to focus on in order to get more sales. So when we're using like Facebook ads or you know Instagram ads, we're really focusing on you know possibly uh, bringing uh, more traffic, so hitting that lever and bringing warm traffic, right? So it increases the conversions. So that's something we talk about within uh, the influencer stuff that we do. Um, and that's something we go about into the optimization section. But we're trying to just cover a lot of stuff about the pre-launch uh, today. Um, just getting your listing like set up, fully optimized. And by the time you guys are launching your, before you guys launch your product on Amazon. Okay. Delia, one of our students in the course, uh, is giving us a random tip. And he says, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a site called noam.com. Um, if you can find it and see if your brand name is trademarked, and it lets you know if your brand name is trademarked and if it's taken on social media sites. Oh, uh, Actually, uh, I've heard of sites like this, but it's definitely a resource that we should add to the course. But Nick, essentially what it does is, say I want to look up, say I'm thinking about naming my brand like, anthony's uh cat toys right then it'll automatically search if like the anthony cat toys.com is taking dot net is taking it'll also automatically search if like the facebook url is taken the instagram uh, username is taking twitter username is taking the pinterest username and it'll look up and show all that information really i don't think we have that mentioned within the course i have used something like that before so i am actually going to go ahead and add it to my notes and see, guys, that's the thing, like, I love about, <laughs> uh, like, helping out other people and teaching other people because people, like, come back and remind us about, like, mm -hmm. these different tips and tricks, and it just comes around, like, full circle, uh, you know? So, Delia, I think that's how you say your name. Uh, appreciate that tip and appreciate us on reminding us about that. So, I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people that's watching this live or watching the replay for this. Min, I think Min said, for supplement lab testing, how much do you expect to pay? I got quotes from several labs for various tests. And uh, price ranges from low hundreds to high hundreds to low thousands to high thousands. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't know the answer to this question, Min. Uh, Fernando is the one who usually deals with that stuff. Um, you know, so I think that might be a question for him uh, when he hops on the next live that we do. You know, I, I'm going to guess, I think our facility, like it, it's actually um, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical grade. So uh, we haven't had that much of an issue with like testing and stuff like that, unless you're trying to sell into Canada, which I think you need to get approved. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, again, like this is just what I, I think is happening for our business. Um, you, you should definitely like ask Fernando when he's on there. I don't want to give you false information. Okay. Um, uh, that's pretty valid. And I personally don't know either, um, uh, for supplements, like generally you have to get like FDA approval and there's different labs that do different types of testings. So it, I assume it just depends on like, if it's like, something that's topical on their face versus something that's ingestible yeah. versus something that's for pets versus something that's for babies versus something that's for adults or grandparents. Um, so it just really depends, but I would highly recommend um, getting lab testing done. Uh, yeah. All right. Can you directly link your Amazon? Michael asks, can you directly link your Amazon product link to Instagram or Facebook? Uh, you can, but I highly recommend using like a super URL. That's like one of the things we teach within the course. A super URL is pretty public knowledge, and there's plenty of YouTube guides um, on that. Uh, there's a couple that we've used that we found more success in. Um, if you guys haven't uh, seen the newest one, though, um, that I found the most powerful is um, so Zon Pages has this feature with inside it where they've created like, I don't know, like a super URL on steroids. So their typical super URL right now has like the keywords in it, but it doesn't have a quid, right? So a quid is a QID, like this thing that pops up uh, that's generated like on the spot whenever Amazon does a search. So it inputs like the date and the time step, and um, they can automatically do that for you within Zon pages. So it's super, super powerful. And then what they also do <laughs> now is they also allowed you to attach a Facebook pixel to it, right? So if you guys, any of you guys are familiar with Facebook ads and Facebook pixels, you can also attach a Facebook pixel onto that. And to even add more on top of it, 
what they've done within Zon pages is they have a URL rotator thing where not the URL doesn't rotate, but the keywords can rotate. So you can post one link, but it'll tra it'll rotate the keywords that you want to rank for. So say you want to rank for, you know, red sock and then orange sock and then two pack of socks, right? Like it will rotate all those keywords for you. And you just have to post one link whenever you're posting it to Instagram or Facebook, right? So it's a huge, huge, huge time saver, right? Whenever you're trying to rank products and you're not trying to fumble around with a lot of different links and like dealing with like all these different links you're sending to like, you know, when using services like Rebate Key or Zon Jump or anything like that. So it makes it a lot, lot, lot more easier for Michael. Uh, and then Lisa and Haley asked us, uh, what was the name of the website that we were talking about earlier? Uh, the website that Delio was talking about earlier is, uh, what is it called? It's called noam.com. I'll post it in the comments below. Uh, if my computer doesn't freeze on me. Uh, noam.com. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, okay. But Nick, uh, okay, so Nick, besides, let's say, like, the keyword research that we've done, the photography, um, you know, and the uh, graphics, uh, EBC, um, and setting up your PPC, uh, what else do you think a person should have set up? Should they have, like, their email follow-ups set up, too? Or mm -hmm. is there anything else that we should cover? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, um, you know, you definitely want to set up your PPC. Uh, you also want to make sure um, that you're setting up the super URL, right? So you can use Zom pages for that. And Zon Pages has an awesome like storefront automatic URL thing that you can use. Zon Pages, by the way, guys, is an awesome tool that's so freaking cheap. It's it's like crazy. There's there's such a good suite of tools. So, and, you know, there's a great coupon code um, in the crafting guide. You guys should definitely check it out. And you can also tie a Facebook pixel to that as well. So it has that exact tool that, that Anthony was mentioning earlier. And then, you know, definitely you want to set up the feedback uh, sequence. There are two tools that we really use, really like to use. I just recently migrated actually to Feedback Wiz. And so I'm I'm testing that out, but Zon Pages is also a really great cheap tool that's reliable as well, um, and that includes an email follow up sequence. But Feedback Wiz is a really cool tool that we're testing out, and allows you to do a lot more triggers, and allows you to also see you know customers that have left a negative review, so you can do a follow up sequence based off of that. Now I want to you know give a caveat, which is that a lot of people, if you're asking for them to change the review. Do not put that in your wording because people are getting their accounts banned because of that. So make sure that you're really careful. Don't mention review. Don't even mention reviews in your email sequence. Just use the word feedback. Okay, just honest feedback. That's all you want. You're looking for honest feedback because you want to avoid those reviews as much uh, the the ban as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, you do not want to get banned off Amazon. That is always like a huge annoying thing. Things suspended from Amazon and dealing with things like that. It's not fun. And trust yep. me, you don't want to be in that situation. All right. I think we're going to wrap up soon, right? Let's just take a couple more if there's any questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, just to repeat again for Lisa and Haley, the website was called gnome.com. Gnome.com is like an easy way for you to check if like the domain or brand name that you want for your product, your future brand is taken within like um, the .com, .net uh, URLs or any of the social media websites. Like, cool. And then asked is, how would you vet a U.S. supplement manufacturing and any other ones I contact have little to no online reviews? Um, I know one thing that Nick and Fernando have done is they actually visited a supplement uh, supplier. And when you visit a supplement supplier, I'm, I'm sure, like, off the bat, you could kind of tell if they're legit or not. Uh, I know Nick and Fernando went to their facility, and they were just like, they're legit. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. off the bat. Yeah. So, so I mean, Min, what you could probably find is you could probably find a supplement manufacturer that um, that also produces generic pharmaceuticals. And if that's the case, that means that they their entire laboratory is like super legit because they have to have all the certifications um, in order to produce any kind of generic over the counter drugs. So that's something that you might want to look for. A lot of these like supplement manufacturers do not have all those certifications, so they can't make um, any kind of generic pharmaceuticals. And oftentimes the, the supplement companies that can do generics, they have like a really, really like legit system. Um, and, and because of that, they're just literally plugging nutraceuticals into their system. Um, they're just adding it in, you know, as an additional revenue source. Um, and that means that they're super legit. Um, they have all the labels down. Everything is down. They, you know, they're, they're tested to basically medical grade um, because as you know, supplements aren't vetted as, uh, you know, as stringently as um, supplements. So, uh, or sorry, as a uh, uh, pharmaceutical stuff. 
So mm -hmm. you want to find someone who can do both. And, and I think that'll be like a, a bullseye for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then I guess for us to just like wrap it up uh, with the last question, I think it's a little broad, but general. Um, and it's a good point uh, that Michael is bringing up, but he asks is, do you see Amazon becoming super saturated anytime soon? Or do sellers have to become more creative to compete? Uh, what do you think, Nick? I mean, I think this is a legit it. question, right? I mean, when we first joined, like we could buy reviews. And before that, like in 2011, someone could literally just put a listing up and just make money, right? I mean, there's no competition. And I think, you know, now people are catching wind. There's definitely more and more competition. But I, I think you got to realize that, you know, Amazon is still projected to increase, right? So we have some of these stats on our landing page, but Amazon is projected to gross $220 billion in sales. And last year they did $170 billion. So that's a $50 billion increase from last year to this year. 50, okay? So, so that's a lot of wiggle room of just increase in sales. So, I mean, yeah, I think like generic products, like, you know, maybe it's going to be a little more difficult. That's why you have to get smart about how you merchandise your product, you know, how you beat your competition, which is something that we go in depth into in our course, because it's something we address and a lot of people are worried about. But, you know, that's where these fundamentals come in, um, in terms of being able to evaluate your competition, being able to merchandise your product effectively, you know, be having really advanced um, um, tactics when it comes to optimizing your listing and PPC strategies. You know, these are all fundamental things that aren't going to go away. They're not cheap tactics, like let's say giveaways or like buying reviews. These are things that will apply to any kind of business that you go into that's marketplace or SEO related. So, I mean, yeah, it's saturated. I mean, it's getting more and more competitive, but that means that you really need to emphasize the fundamentals of what makes a business good. And, you know, Amazon is constantly increasing, right? They're expanding into other countries, you know, and in 2019, I'm sure they're going to project another increase of, you know, tens of billions of dollars, which still means more and more opportunity for everyone else. So, um, you know, Amazon only has like a one in two penetration in the U.S. And I don't see anyone else, their, their closest competitor is Walmart. No one has even caught up to them. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just see it as like, you know, we're still early, despite what you might think. It wasn't as easy as it was three years ago. But if you, you know, have the right knowledge, you can definitely make this work and build a, a consistent business, in my opinion. Okay. And all right. So before I, you know, give my two steps on this, can everyone in this room give, you know, Nick a round of applause? Do you drop him some likes? I give him some thank yous of all the knowledge he's that he's dropped on this. You know, like uh, he deserves a couple likes. He deserves a couple hearts. But yeah, Nick's uh, dropped a lot of knowledge on just what the pre-launch, right? And this is only like, honestly, like we could have like a three hour conversation, four hour conversation on here and we would still not be able to get through like all the things that you could do to get ready to have your product ready for when you launch your product on Amazon, right? Um, there's just like all these things, like their email follow up sequence. We didn't fully, fully get into that, like of how optimized, like the shirt subject, the headline, the copy inside it, uh, uh, images, you know, handouts within it. Like things like that, uh, but we covered that all within our course and whatnot. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to know more and get like a quick preview of that, make sure you guys join us for the live webinar that we're having on Friday. Uh, the link is in the pinned post that's uh, attached to this Facebook Live and everything. Um, but like always, you know, like we're here to help you guys. Let us know what questions you guys have in the comments. We'll follow up on you uh, with you guys. Um, but if you guys do have questions about the course, about, you know, the webinar, just like PM us, let us know. Of course, links, you can like find it. It's, I don't know, P something, 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 <laughs> uh, dot com. Uh, but you'll see it around and whatnot. But yeah, if you guys want to know more about that, I highly recommend you guys join the webinar that we're going to have, you know, the workshop that we're going to have this Friday. Uh, cause we're going to go into the three major things that were like the huge game changer mindsets and actionable tips and contents, um, and strategies that change our businesses when, uh, on Friday and everything. So, and then just to add my two cents, Amazon's not going away anytime soon. All right. Amazon's like the biggest company. It's going to just projected to be the first trillion dollar company. And if you guys want to get uh, be on top of this wave and be a part of the wave, I highly recommend you do it now. And there's also another thing that I always hear, like some of my mentors say, right? They always say it's easier to get 1% of a multi-billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar industry, than it is to try to get into an opportunity that's only a million dollar opportunity. So, you know, like you guys can do this. I mean, like I'm doing it. Nick is doing it at like 10 times X what I'm doing. 
And there's plenty of people that are doing it, you know, at all different levels within the Amazon game. And the fact that you guys are here watching us right now means that you guys know, deep down you guys know that there is opportunity somewhere within this Amazon thing. So, you know, uh, we're here to help. So let us know if you guys have any questions, like always. But on that, Nick, do you guys, do you have any closing comments? No, nah, man. Uh, I hope to see you guys in the reg in the uh, private label MBA workshop. So definitely join us. There's a link there. Um, otherwise, I'm really looking forward to these Facebook Labs. I've been really enjoying this. So um, it's been really fun to just interact with everyone. All right, cool. All right, thanks for all the, the thank you guys. So Michael, Amir, uh, Will, thanks for coming back on again. Delia, thank you for joining thank you guys. Uh, the course. I hope it helped. Uh, Min, thanks for showing back up like always. And Michael, yeah, some great questions tonight. Uh, so we'll see you guys around. All right, better than that, you guys have a great night. See thank you guys. You see. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,